have much time for the details of the experiment, but let me just tell you a few things which I think are important. Uh, in our experiment, we have six subjects participating in each market. So you can think of these six subjects as six farmers, and we have two types of farmers. Uh, we have type one, who perhaps grows a mixed crop, who has a low value for water and high elasticity of demand for water. And we have a type two farmer, who is more sensitive to water restrictions, has very high value for water, a low elasticity of demand, and also needs some kind of a minimum requirement. So he needs a minimum threshold, because if you don't have that, then you, then you really don't have any production in the field. Okay, so these are the uh, benefits from each unit of water for each different type. And as you can see, the one in red, the, the farmer who has a red benefit function, is not going to get any benefit from water unless he gets at least this much water. Okay, only then the benefits start increasing. Okay. Uh, the experiments are conducted at the University of Montpellier uh, and we have neutral terminology where water rights are called shares and water allocations are called coupons. Okay, so we also conducted some other risk games just to see what their risk preferences are. I'm not going to talk about that. I'll, I'll talk about that later if we have time. Uh, so this is what the market looks. At the beginning of the, ex of the, at the, beginning of the trading period, uh, subjects are given uh, shares and then they can make the share market. Okay, so they can trade these shares with each other. Uh, once they have finished trading in the share market, they get to know whether they are in the yellow scenario or the, or the blue scenario. The yellow scenario represents a dry season and the blue scenario represents a wet season. If you are in a yellow scenario, then you get three times less water as compared to the blue scenario. Okay? Um, and then depending on which scenario you are, you get these coupons which are going to be less in the yellow scenario. Then you can go to the coupon market, that's the second market, the temporary one, and they can trade there. And then at the end of the period, you get to know how much profits you have made, and then you start another trading period. Okay? So this goes on for a few periods. We have 12 periods in total. So I'm going to skip that. And as I said before, we are interested in profits and we are interested in risk allocation. So I'm going to skip that slide but I'll just show you some, some results. Okay, so we're interested in profits and we want to know whether moving to a differentiated system is going to improve profits or not in two different kinds of scenarios. So what were those scenarios? They were the different transactions cost scenarios where the transactions costs are higher in the coupon market, which is the temporary market, and S1 versus S2 where the transactions costs are higher in the share market, which is the water rights or the permanent market. Okay, so we find that when uh, the transactions costs are actually relatively high in the coupon market, then moving to a differentiated system is going to improve profits. Okay, so I should tell you how to read this graph. Um, the green bits are what we observe in the experiment, so that's the profit level that we observe in the experiment. And the brown bit, so in this case 670, that's what, that's the level of profits that they should have uh, obtained according to theoretical predictions. Okay, so we use economic theory to come up with these theoretical predictions and then we see whether in the lab our results are going to match with what we should be seeing in theory. And as you can see from these graphs, uh, C2, which is a differentiated market, does much better. However, S2 does worse as compared to S1. So there's a bit of a conflict here. So it seems as if um, transactions cost can matter. Which, which market is a transactions cost in that can have an impact on your, on your results. The second result that I want to talk about is the um, management of risk. So when you move to a differentiated market, then can you manage your risk better? Okay? And to do that, to, to understand this, we need to think about different types. Because one type is more tolerant to risk than the other type. So what we do is we look at the variability of profits between the wet and the dry scenarios. And we look at this across types. Okay? So I just want to focus on the blue bit, so ignore the yellow one for now. So just look at the blue part of the curve, and what you find is that when you're moving from C1 to C2 for type 1 subject, the blue part has gone up, okay? And for type 2, when you move from C1 to C2, then this has gone down a bit. And this is what you observe here as well, okay? So these, I mean, we have checked these numbers for statistical significance and other such things. Visually, you can't see this very clearly, but what I'm trying to say is that type 1 is taking more risk, and type 2 is getting less risk. Okay, so risk is being allocated in a way such that type 1 bears more risk and type 1 is the one who is more tolerant towards risk and type 2 is the one who is more sensitive. So now type 2 is getting less risk on, on his head. He has to bear the burden, bear less the burden of risk. Okay, 
So, so what we did in this uh, research project is to look at um, a particular feature of water markets, a feature that we thought was actually at the heart of a lot of water market reforms, um, and this is the feature of security of water rights. Uh, we've, we wanted to focus on two aspects. We want to focus on efficiency or profits, and we want to focus on risk allocation. In terms of risk allocation, it seems a differentiated system performs well as compared to a single right system. However, when you're looking at efficiency and profits, then it seems um, it matters which transactions cost world you are in. If you are in the world where the transactions cost are relatively higher in the coupon market, then yes, moving to a differentiated system is good. But if you're in a world where uh, it's more costly to trade rights than allocation, which is the S2 kind of a scenario, then the benefits are less transparent because the profits do not go up in the differentiated system. Okay, So moving to a differentiated system then, uh, you need to think about the trade-off between water allocation and risk allocation. So it's, it can be a bit of a challenge if this is the world that we are in and there's some empirical evidence that this is actually what is happening in the field. We have also done some um, field uh, pilots or I mean, interviews with farmers and they think that the transactions costs are very large in the um, water rights market. So this is basically the world that we would be in, and if this is the world we are in, then moving to a differentiated system is, it's not very clear what the full benefits are going to be. One needs to think more about it. It's not fully transparent. That's all I have to say.